it was really interesting. We had about 50 employees and uh, we were sort of growing, becoming like a real business. And all of a sudden I was working with a, uh, someone that said, you know, how many people here in your business know if you're making or losing money? And I'm like, well, probably I do. And I have a bookkeeper and we have sort of a controller. Again, we're probably back then about a $3 million business, a $4 million business. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you help people know if you're making money? And I think in most business owners, you're very fearful of, gee, they're going to think I'm really rich. You know, if a, if that pallet of cookie dough cost or we, we sell it for $2,000, like, wow, that's a lot of money. And so what we decided to do, it actually turned into this question of like, I'm sorry to go back to sports. It was like, how do you win the game? You know, like, in, in sports or checkers or chess or anything, you know your opponent, there's a strategy, you win, you lose, you know what the score is. And so I just finally said, I'm just gonna go for it. And so like around 30 years ago, we just decided that we're gonna open the books for people. The only thing we don't share is what each other make as far as compensation. There's companies that do that. So we should wonder why we don't. And what we found was, um, we, we started to use the expression, we want everybody to think and act like owners. So if we expect people to help us grow and be more profitable and, sh and share the profits and talk about bonus on goals that we have, it's sort of like, how do you really do that without sharing how to make money and are we making money? So I quickly got over the um, fear of having everybody think, wow, you're a business owner that must have so much money because quite frankly, lots of times they realize that's all you make or you, we're only on that. We're only making like 10% or 5% pre-tax profit. Oh my gosh, that's, that doesn't sound like a lot. And then actually when you're having a hard time is when most people would be the most fearful to share. It's quite frankly, the best time to share. You know, if we are like, the raises are going to be less this year. Why? Everybody, every month we show you what we're doing. We've got to tighten our belts. We're all tightening our belts. So over time, I would, I always advise people to, uh, you know, if you're a little fearful, then just nibble into a little bit. You know, you can share parts. We just decided to go, you know, all in about 30 years ago. And I would just quickly hit maybe on the challenge side of, of your question. It's, been hard, I think, um, as the business grows and scales. And so, um, you know, being able to just have 50 people or 30 people when they started, it was all on one shift. Um, most people at that time, I think, were English, you know, had a high level of English proficiency. Um, and so now 250 people, three shifts, so 24 hours a day, a lot of different languages, a lot of different familiarity and comfortable level of comfortability with um, looking at financials and graphs and things. So how do you like make that digestible um, for people all throughout the organization? And so that becomes the challenge of like, what information do you share? It's less about like what information you share, but how do you share it mm -hmm. so that it's valuable to everybody? Um, and so that to me is like the, as I think about how do we sort of sustain open book management going forward? How does that, how does that happen? How do we make sure the folks who, are just arriving in the last few months from Afghanistan start to, you know, when the time is right, they start to be able to tap into that. Because right now we don't have a great way for them to do it. So we need to figure that out. Mm -hmm.